Thank you. This is positive the discrimination. Thank you. All the time to ask all the questions we want. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like, first of all, to congratulate uh, Honorable Safamafu on his nomination and to commend him most highly for the major impact that he's brought about in this economy, particularly introducing the Financial Administrations Act, Public Procurement Act, and the Internal Audit Act. I think these are to strengthen the economic management system of the nation. My colleague has asked the question that I wanted to ask, so I'll pass on to the education sector on procurement. Now I come to education. Honorable, you were Minister of Education at the time and sports, and at the time I was at the Labour Ministry. We had some discussions, and it came out clearly that in your days, anybody coming out of Polytechnic would immediately earn higher than somebody coming out of a university if they worked in a factory. We are seeing the situation now where most polytechnics are being changed into universities. And we all know that universities are training people to become directors and executive uh, directors of our companies. If all the universities are changed to, uh, the polytechnics are changed to universities. Technical universities. Technical universities, I know. But we may not have technical operational staff at the factories. Will there not be a gap? If there is a gap with the desire of the government to transform the economy through the economic sector by way of industrialization, how do we meet this gap? Thank you. I think we have a problem in this country. Perhaps if we are talking about top four investors in the world, you cannot do that MIT. Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It is not an university. It's an institute of technology. And if you look at many other countries, this type of thinking makes the Institute of Technology very important because of the high level of skills that they bring about. And somehow, <coughs> conceptually, most Ghanaians believe that they should have a university education. So there's a need to convert even all the polytechnics into Investors, so the title investor will be attached to it. Whereas we could have developed along the lines of technologists without necessarily being investors, uh, is something that is psychological and we should look at it. Because what we should be looking at is getting the required manpower to push development in this country and not necessarily talking about investing degrees talking about required skill manpower to run the system. And when that happens, it means people will even earn more by being technologists than by being university graduates. That, that's my view. It's, it's something we should revisit and think through. Thank you. Honorable, um, Honorable Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Honorable Senior Minister designate. Congratulations. Uh, I also want to put it on record that Honorable has been my boss before and <laughs> he has been my mentor throughout NIV, at NIV. Honorable, on September 25th, 2015, countries all over the world, including Ghana, adopted a set of goals to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all, and therefore prescribe a sustainable development agenda. Each goal has specific targets. The government of the day has a role to play. In your role, as a coordinator and as a supervisor, Honorable Senior Minister Designate, I would like to know what will be your role in ensuring that His Excellency Nana Dodanko Akufuado's government is on track on the attainment of these goals. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Member. I think the easiest way to attain these goals 
is to have these things coordinated so that the left knows what the right is doing to push a particular direction. So this role I am going to play will further enhance our chances of meeting these development goals because we are going to make sure that we pick them one by one and see which knob to press to ensure that we get closer to achieving the goals. If we left them out uncoordinated, uh, you can see the consequence. So the coordination becomes even more important and more emphatic. Thank you. Um, now to leadership. Oh, you haven't had a chance at all. Right. You also have one opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Nanayao Osafumafu, congratulations. As a coordinator of sector ministries, by your definition, I know you are blessed with a um, lot of experience per your CV and practice. What do you think is the true economic state of the nation Ghana? Is there any hope for an ordinary Ghanaian? <laughs> and the way forward. Honorable nominee. Honorable member, I think the economy is certainly not in the best of shape, but uh, it is doable, I can put it that way. And perhaps it is because Ghanaians want that new direction. That's why they voted for us. And we should go in there and try to make a change. That's what I would say. Hope certainly there is. I mean, the situation has been worse for other countries before, and I don't see any problem. As I said, our economy is fundamentally strong. And therefore, if we discipline ourselves and do certain things right, we should be able to get ourselves out of the woods as soon as possible. But we need to work hard and discipline ourselves. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Now to the leadership. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the nominee going through your CV, there was a gap between 1989 and 1990. There was a missing information. I don't know whether you didn't do anything because your CV didn't tell us between 1989 and 90, what you were doing. So if you could kindly tell us. Actually, if we had brought in man. ...89, and resumed January at NIB in 90. So there's no gap. It's a question of days. There's no gap. That, that one should be end of 89. I left. The government made the changes during the Christmas week, and we moved to the, our previous place. So in some, if I put the same about it, no, that's why that impression is created. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. As a mini senior minister, as you yourself said, who is going to be in charge of coordination of all the activities? How do you intend to coordinate the various sectors to be able to deal with the growing unemployment in our country. The unemployment is worsening because there is no growth. And therefore, what we have to do as a country is to make sure that we develop and push growth. From our manifesto, we are thinking of pushing growth from the private sector window. That's why we're talking about creating a friendly environment to bring on board a lot of the private sector activities to generate growth. And I can assure you that no government can solve unemployment using employment through the government channel. How many can the government employ in the public sector? Nothing, very little. Employment must come from the private sector. And this is how we should all think along and push it's, employment is going to come with the private sector, then we should make it easier for the private sector to thrive. So I think that is a collective effort and we should work along those lines. You said the government can do nothing, but... I we can do so by creating the, that environment to enable the <coughs> private sector to thrive, to grow. 
the government should not dream of solving the unemployment problem by employing people in the, in the, in the public sector. How many can the civil service take at any point in time? Sir, at the time I was a minister of education, we had six public universities. Six public universities. Today, as I speak, we have 650 something investors. So let us think gradually. Yes, private investors. Yes, 400 and something. No, 67. Thank you. Sorry. 67. I don't say 67 investors. Now, private investors. Now, compare the output of six and that of 67 plus six makes it 73. Is it not scary? in terms of output and opportunities available. So we should not be thinking about the public sector as a source of employment. It should be the private sector. We should push it hard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I want to find out from the nominee. He said that they will have to renegotiate the IMF uh, deal or the IMF program. But in the MPP manifesto, page 15, they talked about reducing borrowing and debt. He himself said that when they renegotiate, they want to create space. And in this piece, he was mentioning about possible borrowing, other cheap monies, or with other better conditions to substitute the existing one. Whichever way financing, to, fin to refinance the existing ones, whichever way you look at it, definitely there will be increase in debt. Because it's not possible for you to just have it going down. But it will but your manifesto says and in your campaign platform you kept saying that you do everything to reduce debt, you are going to reduce borrowing. But when I heard you sitting, you clearly stated that you will have to do it with a better terms. How do you reconcile these two positions? Hello, sir. When you talk about that, it is your repayment, which creates a liability for you. If I'm, play, I'm paying 100 CDs a month, and I'm able to reduce it to 50 CDs a month, as far as servicing the debt liability, I've come down by 50%. It's different from the corpus of the debt. So when you do refinancing, to such that your repayment comes down, you have reduced your debt. Because as a balance sheet, what you take on board is your repayment. It is that is what saddles you, and you can reduce it by various arrangements. So the two are not inconsistent. You, 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 I don't know whether I make myself clear. No, because if you borrow, Let, let's say if you borrow, you may be. But after borrowing, after borrowing, your debt, your stock debt goes up, but your repayment of hundred because of the new arrangements of the borrowing comes to fifty. On your monthly, call it overhang, you are paying fifty instead of hundred. Is it not reduction? No, I mean, that's why we were calling smart borrowing and they said that uh -huh. it wasn't good. Because at the end of the day, I'm just looking at the terms that you use. You reduce borrowing and you reduce the debt. Because if you borrow that you pay in 100 years and you are not paying it today, it doesn't mean that your debt hasn't gone up. Like you yourself rightly said, the bench line is that your debt has gone up, but you promised that you are going to reduce the debt. You have that's why I'm just saying. your debt better and this would affect your cash flow. And that is what you need to run the system. Well, anyway, in your earlier answer that you gave Auditor General a written declaration of all properties, property or assets owned by or liabilities owned by him, whether directly or indirectly, A, within three months after coming into force of this constitution or before taking office, as the case may be, B, at the end of every four years, and C, at the end of his, terms of his term of office. So if you look at between 1997, maybe let me even take it back, because even as the MD for bank NIB and banking, Bank for Housing, State Corporation, all that, you were supposed to have declared your assets. So it couldn't have been that you should have declared your assets only twice in your life. No, no, okay, so 1992, 1992, even if you take that away, from 1997, the first four years ended 2001. You were supposed to have declared in 1997, and then in 2001, and then in 2005, and then in 2009. So at least, 
The list should have been about four times. Why did you declare only twice? I, I believe I've, I've declared it more than that. I was talking about the exit, actually, because you have to declare when you are exiting, and that's what actually I was referring to. Well, if that is what you're saying, we'll be happy to see the receipts because to just to confirm that you, 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 maybe it was a slip that you said twice I, I, or you've done it more than that. that. Uh, okay. But to just move on. When I look at your CV, your consultancy came into force before you left office. Your CV shows that the consultancy that you established was before you ended your tenure as a member of parliament. Am I right? Yes. And you know that when you do that as a member of parliament or a minister, you are supposed to go through this check from your office. Members I got, I got permission from the, from the speaker in writing. Office of profit. I, was, if, I thought you were going to allow me to even finish. Uh, okay. So I wanted to be sure that you got the certificate. Yes, I, I got the permission. You got the permission yes. from the speaker to, yes. to do that. Yes. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Chairman, I want to know, as a senior minister, you know, you say you'll be in charge of coordination. We also have economic management team. What will be different from what you'll be doing and what the economic management team will be doing? Chairman, I've answered this same question more than three times, so I don't know why I won't repeat. I've answered this to other people. The same thing, put in the same way, so I don't know why we want us to repeat ourselves. Um, well, let me, let well, me, uh, uh, please ask another I question. That. I grant that, I grant that. Maybe I didn't hear the answer, so I grant that. I want to find out, I want to find out from the senior minister. Will you be reporting to the chief of staff or you'll be reporting directives to the president? Somebody put it, this question of law, every minister reports to the president, please. Every minister reports to the president, and I will report to the president. Because you said in said, your I'll earlier, the president. you said earlier in answering question that the chief of staff will be dealing with matters in and around the president. Maybe not just quoting verbatim, but all you said was that the chief of staff will be dealing with issues around the office of president, and you know from experience that because you are a minister most of the things that you will be reporting to the president mostly will be through the chief of staff. That's why I'm asking, are you going to be reporting to the chief of staff or directly to the president? No, I will report direct to the president. Mr. Chairman, my last question. Is so sourcing, is so sourcing illegal? And are you going, as a minister, senior minister who will be in charge of coordination, Will you be doing, or will you encourage social sourcing under some circumstances? Honourable nominee, please. The answer is in the law, so it is yes, not illegal. Social sourcing is not illegal. How can it be illegal? So let me let me let me take this last one. I have the transitional act with me. In your earlier question about the appointments and what have you, you said that you have the right to review because you think that you've had you've written a letter to the then chief of staff i want to quote a section of the current transition act for you uh, 11 1 it says that two days before dissolution of parliament the clerk of parliament shall summon a meeting of the elected members of parliament to a elect a speaker and then on and on but because this was inconsistent with the Constitution, we didn't do it. I'll be happy if you can show me whether in the Constitution or in the uh, act that you were variously making reference to, where it said, because an election has been done, 30 days to the end of the tenure, 
the president cannot do anything, but he has to wait for the incoming one to do. I'll be happy to know that because we are talking about legal issues, framework, how to govern our country, and you sit and you proudly say that you are going to, you are going to review. Can we see where there's a breach, whether in the Transition Act or in the Constitution? Thank you. I don't have a copy with me, and I just wouldn't know. If I had my copy and were looking at it, I would. But are you aware that there is a timetable for submission of the handing over notes to the Administrator General? That's what I was referring to. Since he wants clarification. Yes, but that doesn't say that if you hand over, you, you give handing over, it doesn't mean that the government comes to a halt and they cannot do anything and cannot act. You don't do major things. What, no what do you call things. major? <laughs> so what do you call major? Why, why, why are you asking us to Honourable, submit your report? Honorable Nomni, please don't respond. He's finished his answers. Honorable Haruna, please. The chairman, let me thank you for the opportunity. And let me congratulate uh, Engineer Yao Osafu Mafu. He served the country in very many different uh, respects. My first will be to respond to a matter of law. Now, if you copiously refer to the Transition Act, and the Transition Act provides that handing over notes one month before the election. Do you agree that you couldn't have had a transition team before the election? The transition team should be in place 48 hours after the results have been declared. And this is very specific in the law. Therefore, the one the month before the election. The appointment should be 24 election, hours. The inauguration should be 48 hours. Therefore, one month before the election, there was no happen. team that ought to have received and could have received a handing over notice. Do you no, agree? that should be the administrator general. Administrator general. Chairman, can I, can I have the floor? I'm just suggesting to Honorable Yao Osafu Mafu that ministers, order, order. Order. ministers complied with this provision and handing over notes pursuant to the Transition Act was made available to the Administrator General. So why didn't the Administrator General give them to us? He had to wait until the joint transition team was constituted per the requirement of the 48 hours after the election, and that was done. Mr. Chairman, after the 48 hours elapsed, we received eight out of about 30. So why would you say that it was done? You, if you were there, you remember. They brought a letter for 10, and when we got there, were only eight in it. And then they requested for more time to bring the rest. We gave more time, and even there, it took us almost two weeks to get the one of the presidency. Uh, Chairman, I, I, I ought not to. First of all, let me establish that under Article 11 of the Constitution, the Transition Act is not superior to the 1992 Constitution of Ghana. And therefore, you will be swearing an oath as minister. And in that oath, you will be swearing that you would uphold the laws and the Constitution of Ghana, which includes Article 66 that the Honorable Samson he referred to. Will you respect that? Read that law again, please. Be, be, be very Article cool. six, 66, as be Honorable be Samson referred to, defines the tenor of government and the presidency, which tenor is four years, lapsing midnight before the dawn of 7th January. Will you recognize that acts that are done, save that which are unlawful, are within the mandate of the administration? Certainly. Thank you. May I now refer you to, I'm holding the budget statement of, uh, of uh, 2004. You are then 
Honorable Yao Safuma, for Minister of Finance and Economic Planning, we've heard you make public uh, commitments and pledges to review corporate taxes. And I'm quoting, Mr. Speaker, in order to ease the tax burden on the corporate sector, I'll jump the rest. Income, corporate income tax rate from the current 32.5% to 30%. Would you admit that you are inheriting a better corporate tax regime today? I will say yes and no. I will say yes because we are inheriting 25. But as we brought it from 32, depending on the period, if I were managing, I would have had tax at about 20% by now. It's a period you are looking at. So you can't just say that for all that period, you want to attract businesses. It depends. But yes, it is lower than what it was at the time. And you are talking about 2004. May I also refer you to page 82, another 202 financial year budget statement, Honorable Yao Osafu Mafu. Today I've heard you on nuisance tax and VAT and others. And I quote, the VAT service will focus attention this year on taxable services provided within the finance and banking sector. Therefore, are these taxes new? This was in 2002, where you were charging VAT on the financial and banking sector. They are not new, but time-wise today is inappropriate because time changes, <laughs> and we've got to change it. And oh, she, taxation is a function of time. And you are in competition with your neighbors. You are in competition with others. And therefore, something which we could hold and defend in 2002 you cannot defend in 2016. I'm surprised you are not paying attention to time, and you are just referring this. Yes. Uh, Honorable Engineer Yao Osafu Mafu, in October 2004, you have worked with the World Bank and the IMF, and you are aware that the IMF deals with governments. Yes. And you are aware that the government of Ghana has a three-year external credit facility with the IMF. Its review has to be consensual, not unilateral. Will you say that the decision by your economic management team for a review is as yet a unilateral decision? You don't know what has happened in between. The IMF is sending an advanced team on the 3rd of February as a staff mission. And before they did, we have had discussions with our vice president. And we have indicated the need for a review because of our own policies. And they will come around 15th, 16th for actual visit and possible review. So I think a lot has gone on between us and the IMF. They deal with the governments and they are dealing with the current government. And that's normal. Whilst I agree with you, the IMF have always sent review teams to Ghana. That is not the same thing as renegotiating aspects of an agreement that was concluded between the government of Ghana and the IMF as this memorandum of economic framework. What aspects of it do you intend to seek review on? Is it on 0% financing from Bank of Ghana? Is it on fiscal? Let us know. Or reforms within the public sector? One, I give you two dates. I said they're coming early in February as a staff. That's not for the review. They are coming middle of February for the review exercise. And we're already talking with them because we must do the review before our budget comes out early in March. Because our budget should translate the figures we will arrive at with the fund into the budget. And therefore, we have all this slotted in, in our dates. Honorable nominee, you have served this country right as Minister of Finance. In your budget statement, you have indicated that this government will borrow, appreciating the fact that we have acquired middle income status, and therefore that affects your fiscal space in terms of borrowing. How might you intend to borrow for this year, and will it reflect in your economic policy statement for 2017? I've not, at the moment as I speak, we don't even have all accurate figures from both Bank of Ghana and Minister of Finance. We are getting a lot of inconsistencies arriving out what we call arrears in the pipeline, the Kuntana General's office, etc. I will not be in the position to talk about financial gap. 
You can only talk about borrowing when you have determined some of these things, which we are not able to do now. So I can't really talk about level of borrowing. Thank you very much. You would be minister in an amorphous nomenclature of senior minister, or otherwise as defined by you, minister responsible for coordinating economic ministries. How do you intend to use that to address the growing unemployment in the country as you indicated in your earlier submissions? Please, this, has been answered. Answered. this has been answered twice, please. Yes, I do. May I now refer to your CV? The same question. May I refer to your CV? And honorable colleagues, we are assuming that the CV is tendered in as part of the evidence before this committee. And since it's under oath, membership of professional body and membership of professional bodies, just watch uh, under uh, the third page of your CV. I'm sure you want to do some realignment there. I can't see how Nestle Ghana Limited or Red Coal Limited will be professional bodies. I see your good friend Elijah Aminu at your back. His name, is it spelled Amenu, A-M-E, or the Aminu that I know? Would you want to further look at those portions of your CV? It's indicated as reference, al Haji Engineer Amenu Amado. I know it's Aminu Amado. Thank you for the correction. You refer to some taxes as nuisance taxes. As Minister of Finance and inheriting thereupon from you was the introduction of a national stabilization levy. Will you describe that as nuisance tax then? It was certainly not a nuisance. We inherited a debt that needed certain other measures to rake in inflows. And it did the job it was supposed to do. It wasn't an example. It was a levy. It wasn't a tax. And it applies specifically to certain sectors. If you recall, we talk about the financial sector and other, uh, other things. So it wasn't a tax. It was a levy. Honorable Minister-designate, the review exercise and possible rene 